I mean, this book. Just wow. Hey everyone, it's James from Brewing Books. I'm back again with another video where we will be looking at what I consider to be the best non middle earth talking book. Anyone who's read my blog post from around seven years ago will know how much I adore this book. I admit I am no poetry expert, but I do love reading and writing the occasional bit of poetry. But I do stand by my statement that this is the best non middle earth talking book. This is just my opinion, of course, and I'm sure that most of you will probably disagree, but here's my defense. The Fall of Arthur was published posthumously in 2013 and is an unfinished poem by Tolkien concerning the fabled Arthur, King of Britain. The poem runs to 975 verses, yes, I've counted them, as it deals with King Arthur's war campaign in the East before a hasty return to Britain after he hears that his nephew Mordred has taken over the throne. The verses are composed in the Old English alliterative style in which the epic poem Beowulf was written. In fact, the tone of voice and style of Tolkien's writing is very much synonymous with that of Old English work, so much so that the fall of Arthur invokes a strong spirit of that Anglo-Saxon fearlessness, daring, solitude and emotion that is instilled in so many of the Old English literary works. Unfinished though it remains, it did not deter publishers in releasing the hardback version a couple of years ago, followed by its paperback counterpart. And this is the deluxe edition of that work. So as we can see, The Fall of Arthur is edited by Tolkien's son Christopher, with the main motif illustration of a mounted King Arthur with battle dress, a shield and wielding his sword. The illustration was produced by Bill Sanderson and has been gold foil stamped on both the slipcase here and the front cover of the book itself. Now let's pull out the book here. Yeah, I must say it's uh, quite a tough book to extract. Uh, the slipcase appears to be a bit too much of a tight fit. Anyways, we can see the beautiful reproduction of the motif here as well, and the overall presentation of the covers in this silvery grey colour tone. It's just beautiful. Now, let's go ahead and open the book itself. So we have here the frontispiece which contains a full colour page reproduction from Tolkien's original manuscript of the poem. It must be noted that the poem is structured into five cantos or sections, with the fifth one ending off abruptly at a crucial stage in the story. At the end of the book a section is dedicated to notes to explain certain archaic words and clarifying some concepts within certain verses or stanzas of each poem. Now, besides the poem itself, there are also three essays by Christopher Tolkien. In my opinion, as with any other of Christopher's essays, they are masterfully written. There's such a clarity and a fullness to the arguments and analysis put forth. It's just a joy to read the words he put on paper, and shows the love and passion he shared for his father's own work. Each of these essays deals with a specific topic, in this case, the poem in Arthurian tradition, the unwritten poem and its relation to the Silmarillion, and the evolution of the poem. Christopher goes to great lengths to outline how the poem fits within the larger Arthurian legends already in existence, and how it actually relates to Tolkien's own work on the Silmarillion. In addition, at the end of the book we find a short appendix explaining the use of the Old English alliterative verse. As with all other Tolkien deluxe editions, the book is printed on superior quality paper and contains the synonymous uh, silk ribbon marker. As to the content of the poem, I don't think it is a requirement for you to be well versed with Arthurian literature, thus having to read Sir Thomas Mallory's La Mort d'Arthur, for example, or any other literary work of the type. In fact, Christopher Tolkien's essays provide the necessary background for the poem. 
Needless to say though, if you are familiar with the legend of King Arthur, it will obviously help orientate Tolkien's poem with the rest of the literature. But all a reader needs to know really before tackling this work is the general knowledge associated with Arthur as King of Britain. His loyal and not so loyal knights, the Round Table, Lancelot and Guinevere's relationship and all those elements you most certainly might have come across about the Arthurian world. Now, as I said, Tolkien picks off his poem at a later stage in Arthur's life, when, together with his army, he marches across Europe, intent on cleansing the heathen lands. But trouble soon emerges as he is called back to Britain, as his nephew, Mordred, usurps the throne and seeks to make Guinevere his wife and prisoner. The poem's intention was to culminate ultimately in the famous Battle of Camlan, reputedly Arthur's last battle. However, although the poem remains unfinished, all the elements of chivalry, betrayal, lust and honour find their way in this brilliantly constructed piece of fine poetry. Tolkien tackles the alliterative and dynamic style of writing with a bold and fierce approach. The skill with which Tolkien manages to describe so much in such a short amount of words is truly astonishing, and it's one of the main reasons why this is my favourite non-Middle-earth book. So currently on the market there are three editions available uh, of this book. We obviously have the deluxe edition, uh, the hardback and the paperback. Now I believe the paperback version was re-released a couple of years ago with a slightly different cover but it's pretty much the same. Uh, however, if I had to choose between these three I would go for the hardback edition as my favorite. I know it's something about the presentation of the dust jacket, the, the black covers of the of the book, which makes it stand apart from the other two. But that's just down to one's own personal taste, I guess. I mean, I have to admit that the unfinished state of the poem left me somewhat frustrated and a little bit disappointed. There's so much potential here that it's truly a shame that Tolkien never managed to complete this work. In one of the essays in the book, Christopher Tolkien actually does provide a few sketches and drafts of how his father originally intended to end the poem, but the material that we have is very, very limited and almost impossible to piece together. I so wanted to see the poem finished that I actually attempted to write two more cantos in order to complete the poem. So I went through uh, Christopher Tolkien's notes and read and reread the poem to try and capture the style and the rhythm of the original work and I went through line by line writing down the continuation of the story. I managed to complete one canto and this was over five years ago and I still do hope that one of these days I managed to complete the last part of the poem. But that's for another time. In the meantime, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Cheers!